All right, it's time for question three from the FRQ packet. This question originally came from 2019 number three. You'll notice a trend. Most of these questions came, all of these questions came from 2019 and 2018. We wanted you to see what the most recent exam looked like. So here I'm going to check my answers real quick and then we'll just jump to the scoring guideline. 0 0.0636, 0 0.5864, 0 0.12. We'll come back to part B. So for part A, essentially correct if the response reports correct values for the probabilities of I, 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 and I, I, I. So it doesn't say they took off for work here, but of course you should always show your work. So if you got all three of these correct, essentially correct, you should have shown your work on these two, but if you didn't, because of the way it was grouped, they didn't take off here. If you missed one of those, or if you missed two of those, so if you had one or two correct, it's partially correct, none of them correct is just incorrect. Part B, So here's what I did. This is the way we did more often in class with the answer key and such. So if they are independent, then this formula is true. So I just checked to see if that was true. If woman times never equals 0 0.0636, woman and never was 0 0.0636, we got that from the table up above. Those are equal, so that means that they are independent. They did a different formula. So they did the probability of never given that you're a woman. If they're independent, it wouldn't matter if you're a woman or not. So the probability of never given that they are a woman is equal to the probability of never. We found the probability of never given that the individual is a woman right here. And that happens to be equal to the same thing as never. So that means that they are independent. So that's another way to check. You could also check it the other way. The probability of being a woman given that they answered never. And you also would have gotten two numbers that are equal to each other. So you would have gotten the 0 0.53. Whether you did it, whichever way you did it. So let's check what they looked for. Oh, they even listed all three of them right here. Essentially correct, the response indicates that the events are independent. So they asked if they were independent, so you could say yes, or you could say they are independent. Gives an explanation of independence using events in the problem. So that, here's my explanation of independence right here and provides appropriate justification using numbers from the table. Here's my appropriate justification. And again, here are the three possible ways you can show the appropriate justification. Partially correct if the response indicates that the events are independent and gives an explanation of independence but doesn't provide justification using numbers from the table, or if the response indicates the correct method of illustrating events are independent, but makes an arithmetic mistake or a transcription mistake that results in concluding that the two events are not independent. So if you somehow use the wrong numbers here or something like that, and you got that they were dependent because of that, then that would be a partially correct. I think that covers everything. Part C was a binomial distribution problem. So they use the formula, but we're not gonna use the formula. We're too cool for the formula. We had to clearly indicate a binomial distribution with n and p equals 0.54. That's what this is right here. Indicate the correct boundary value and direction of the event. Either of these would have done that. So you don't need both, you just need one of those. And then the correct probability, let me just double check that's the correct probability. Yes, 
they got 0.24149, which is the same thing as 0.2415. Essentially correct if you had all three of those. Partially correct if you had if you had component one, but then you were missing either two or three. Hey. Oh, so partially correct if you had component one, but you were missing either this or this. So if you had that, you automatically got partially correct, even if your execution here was wrong. That's interesting. I didn't know that. They also gave you partially correct if you messed this part up, but you had both of these parts. Okay. Incorrect if you didn't have that. Oh, here they say the response of this satisfies component one, which is what we typically do. They have a whole bunch of other things that you can read if you want, but I don't want to read it. It's a three-parter, so it's the same three-parter breakdown that we've seen at least a dozen times by now. So pause the video if you're not sure what you got. And I will talk to you again in a couple minutes when you watch the next video.